blue. <sighs> I was thinking about doing a video and not saying anything, but I guess I'll just start off. <laughs> so, today, I'm doing a lot of things, but things that I did in the last couple hours watch a few videos by Gers Kassatz, I think, uh, on uh, simulation theory, what you could call it, and uh, um, I followed that up with uh, Vsauce, Vsauce 3 at the end, watched his video. And then I listened to Sam Harris and David Chalmers talk about a lot of things. Since um, oh, little bugs everywhere. Lots and lots of bugs. Such a waste. These lights just make this place worse. Keeping all those lights on. No waste of electricity. Not only that, but it attracts the spiders and the flies. And then they make the place look like crap to anybody. Might be interested in doing something with it. It's going to take just that much more effort. Just to uh, fix it up. Anyway. Um, so I was thinking for this video, or possibly more series of videos, I'm going to walk the same path that I did um, a few minutes, not a few minutes ago, um, to my last two videos, and then try to talk about similar subjects, free will, determinism, but also include simulation theory, and uh, maybe even try the hard problem of consciousness. Since that was the last thing that uh, David Chalmers and, and uh, Sam Harris were talking about. So it was kind of on my mind, a lot of things along those lines. Gonna be difficult, so please bear with me. You know, in our heads, these ideas come out pretty easily, but practice it's a little different, and especially with these types of videos walking and talking. Um, I think the joy of this is that uh, you know, there's distraction for the world. I'm looking up at all the stars in the sky. So beautiful. Taurus. <laughs> I can't adjust the settings on this. What if I had another camera with longer exposure? Um, I'd show you. Uh, Taurus is up. The Fucus right above it. A lot of clouds overhead. It's mostly overcast, but there's a little window to the east. And over there, and I see a uh, Aldebaran. Oh, uh, let's see what are some of the bright stars. And I'm not sure if it's Ophiuchus or Auriga. I think it's actually Auriga, the charioteer, which would make that Capella. Um, I don't know. I'm not, uh, I'm not as good as some of Agent of Doubt seems to think I am it. Uh, knowing constellations. I used to know, know all the Northern Hemisphere ones. And I tried to learn all the Southern Hemisphere ones because there are only 88 constellations. So I figured I could learn them all. I learned all 88 periodic table, table of elements and abbreviations, 
all that sort of thing. Lots of facts about them. And uh, at the time, there were only uh, 100. Less than 100. So now it's 118. And that's pretty amazing. Uh, ooh, this is going to be tricky. Pitch black. Uh, all I see is the reflection of the sky in mud puddles. Oh, great. Potholes, too. I'm on a dirt road. All right. Pretty much starting at the same place I did um, two videos ago. Uh, a few days ago, but that was in the morning. Now, I don't know what time at night it is. But uh, the video will have that information. But, uh, so, just one thing. One thing that kind of bothered me. I'm trying to think who was it. Either Kurt Skatat or, um, Kurt Skatat or Vsauce 3. Um, they said that. They mentioned a Matrioska brain. And if you don't know, it's basically a Dyson Sphere supercomputer. Or, you know, just combine those two things. You, you have, you know, and obviously if you have a Dyson Sphere, you're going to have a supercomputer, but you use that processing power, you know. I guess somebody just took a Dyson Sphere to the next level and thought, what do we do with all that besides just running? Running everything that we would normally have. Um, um, instead of running everything that we would you know, normally have. Uh, uh, transportation, sewage, electricity, cable, <laughs> you know, utilities and everything. Uh, if you've got a sphere around a star... And you've got, you know, many orders of magnitude, more amounts of energy at your disposal. What do you do with it? And, uh, a lot of that's just going to go into maintaining the structure, but uh, you'll have some to spare. You've done things right. Ooh, big animal in the woods over there. Maybe a deer. Another way it sounded like it was bouncing around. The startled the deer is probably sleeping in the woods. Anyway, um, geez. sounds like it's coming at me. Uh, so you've got all this processing power. What do you do? Well, they suggested that uh, you know, like a, a civilization might run. A simulation on it and then have people living inside of that simulation but the thing is the whole, the whole point of this is that there would be simulations in simulations and if that's the case you know let's just put ourselves in that mindset then uh, you know there's there's no reason that anything a simulation above us uh, there's no reason that anything in this world would be similar, or I shouldn't say similar, but would uh, necessarily exist in a simulation above us, or that they have to exist in simulations below us, if, if that's what we wanted to do. But I thought it was pretty interesting, though, that as far as ideas go, and uh, now I'm thinking of David Chalmers, Sam Harris's conversation about how consciousness may be sort of a, a fundamental thing that uh, might exist. Besides, I don't want to get into too much else, but you know, they mentioned panpsychism, stuff like that. But if consciousness is any, any sort of, uh, you know, if it's similar on other levels, 
of the simulation, then perhaps, you know, there is some, you would be able to use some information inside of this simulation to determine what the simulation is like above us. When I say above, I mean the next, next one back, the one that made us. You know, this isn't very interesting. Not for me. You know, it seems a lot of people are into it. And even, you know, this, uh, I'll go on to the next thing. Um, oh, the, the point of that, though, that last thing about the Matrioska brain, is that the, or around a star, is that, you know, maybe that gives us some indication of what uh, things are like in the other one. Not, you know, there doesn't have to be stars, but. Anyway, that's, it's silly. In my opinion, it's, it's silly. If it's a, a good mental exercise if you're in that mindset, I suppose. But I'm in so many different, uh, you know, there's so many different things I want to think about or that I am thinking about and I want to talk about. But I don't really want to get too much into simulation theory. going to go on to another point, but, oh man, what else, what else, I don't know, let's just enjoy the night. hard problem of consciousness. I kind of feel the same way about that as I do about the whole simulation theory thing. I do kind of think that it's a waste. I'm just... This is something that kind of bugs me. Um, and I tried, I really did. I tried to put myself in that mindset that Sam Harris and, and David Chalmers were in and what they were talking about. Maybe I just I don't have the education. Or it's just my head is too firmly planted on my body. Um, but they tried. They tried to uh, get at it. And as best as I could tell, um, what they repeated most that I, I firmly understood is, and, and don't understand, that's the thing that's bugging me, is that, uh, is what is it like to be someone? What is it like to be something? And, uh, Props to Sam Harris for constantly going back and talking to David Chalmers or uh, asking him to clarify because he has such a wide range of viewers. So, you know, as far as education goes in the subjects, I'm really, really appreciate that. But this is this is the part that I think uh, all of us, all of us, you know, could at least. You know, I, I say that, and then I think of all the people that I talk to about these sorts of topics. You know, the least educated people well, I find are some of the most interesting people. Uh, I try to, I try to bring up these subjects, with them, and I just get this, uh, this sort of blank stare. Which may, which may help to understand this. At least, at least to understand intelligence, if not uh, consciousness. Or the hard problem of consciousness. What is it? Why? Or uh, let me rephrase that. Why? 
why is it like something? Why is uh, it's, it's not? I don't know. I don't know what they've uh, done wrong. Done wrong. Why they uh, think like this? Is it wrong? Probably not. They come from. Well, you know, they, uh, David comes from a more mathematical background, and uh, Sam comes from more you know, biology, neurology, neuroscience sort of background. And I, I hate to rip on them and just say, oh, they're in the wrong field. Oh, it's just philosophy. That's some silly philosophers. But maybe that's the thing, maybe... Maybe it's just easier for him uh, to throw these sorts of ideas around rather than actually do science. Uh, you know, they know quite a bit, and that's a, that's another thing. Another thing I wanted to talk about <laughs> about talking about people who talk rather than do things. People who type comments rather than making videos. People who make videos about subjects rather than, you know, working on those subjects. That's one of the one of the problems with with our world is that you know we can't all be doctors, lawyers, scientists. It just wouldn't function. world wouldn't function if that's the way things were. We need, we need all sorts of people. We need a lot of people in the food industry. Maybe not as many as we have, but that's going to change. For sure, as we automate food, which is a nice, nice to think about. I'm glad people can do more things, but people with money have to, have to change, you know, capitalism's got to change. What, what do they call it? Not, not a resource-based economy, but the end of scarcity, yeah, the end of scarcity. So glad the clouds are moving. I'm getting more stars. Really wish I could share them with you. Oh, it's really beautiful. I especially like when it starts to get colder. The stars are clear. Plus, I'm kind of I'm moving a little bit away from lights. The, uh, the mall and the large parking lots. All the wasted light. We could do so much better with our use of electricity. So much is wasted. You know, more, I don't know about more sensors. But we do we waste a lot. All over the world, we waste a lot. Just looking around. Anyway. Stay on topic, but I really want to wander, you know. I really want to talk about whatever, whatever comes to mind. So, one of my joys, we set the videos on top of just getting out of the house, getting out and uh, walking, getting some exercise, uh, breathing the oxygen, seeing the world, and sharing it. Sharing the world and sharing my thoughts. Um, so I'm not really going to crack down. You know, stuff's not scripted. I don't even really think a lot about it. Um, 
prior to making the videos. I just get the urge to to talk to someone. I really wish I lived with someone that I could talk to about these things. But I don't. So but at least you know, at least I can make these videos. Even if just two people watch them. I do love these. I do love these uh, subjects as far as you know, consciousness goes. I don't know how to tie free will. I guess that's something I did. I did say that I would go back over some of the points I made in the previous video, which I think is, is a good idea actually to, to revisit some of those because having made the video. You know, I have thought of a few other things and maybe some points that I didn't emphasize as much as I wanted to. And I suppose if I do that a little more often, maybe I'll, I'll get uh, closer to where I want to go. There's so many, so many awesome subjects. Maybe swan. Hmm, that was an interesting sound. I hope the camera picked that up. Another thing that I love about coming out at night. <clears throat> Just the life is still going. You know, it's not like life just stops. Maybe overall there is less activity because we need the sun. You know, or we use the sun without it. Life in general, you know, there's less, less activity. But, you know, there's still so much, so many animals going. Waves are still going. <laughs> Waves, I include them. I'm in life. I shouldn't though. I have, I have a long list of all of the, there's a good, good subject to talk about. <clears throat> Something I wanted to make a video on. I should have brought some water with me. My voice is going to go, but <clears throat> I have a list of how many am I up to now? 16, I think, or so characteristics of life. You know, things like reproduction, things like metabolism, things like reaction, um, or response. You know, I mean, different different categories, two different uh, definitions for each characteristic that make it unique from the other ones, like reaction and response. But I'm sure it can be simplified. I mean, I got it from you know, I don't know, maybe a dozen other. Sources that all had, you know, five, six, seven characteristics of life. And I just combined them all together. And uh, anything that was obviously the same, uh, like reproduction, and I'm sure you could probably break down reproduction into more. But the thing that I wanted to make a video on is um, evolution regarding these systems evolution you know we tend to think of evolution as a you know an organism evolving or um, a family of organisms um, you know like all the newts 
or all the dogs. You can trace back all the dogs. Um, if you go far enough back, probably. Um, but there was a time, I don't know if dogs and wolves can still interbreed, but probably. I'm pretty sure they can. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, kind of Chihuahua breed was a great thing. But anyway, so you have this uh, proto species, the species, you know, the, the one that gives rise to a group. And we tend to think of that as sort of evolution or humans. For instance, you know, some of us stayed in Africa, some of us went up to Europe, and others uh, tore across Asia. And, uh, and then from there, some of us went down to Australia, and some of us went up to the Bering Straits and came over here. So there's all, all of us, all of us humans. So we tend to think of that sort of a... Uh, individual to individual reproduction but that's that's one thing that evolves i think that's more along the lines of the way that we should look at it and i'm sure there is um every time well not every time but a lot of times when i say things like this i do a little bit more research i'm uh, at starlight beach now by the way and almost half the sky I can see maybe three quarters of the sky, the stars. Ah, oh, it's really beautiful. But I don't like seeing Orion because that always reminds me that winter is on the way. As much as I love seeing Orion. But, uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, each of these individual, not individual, but, so we are a collection of, of these characteristics and some of them play greater roles from species to species you know whether it's metabolism or whether it's reproduction we don't all reproduce the same way you know, even though you could say life all life forms reproduce you know each species even the different members of the species um, <coughs> go about go about in different ways yeah. altogether you know if you're gonna reproduce as a human it's pretty straightforward uh, as far as how to go about it what the outcome is going to be how many kids you can have uh, at one time that sort of a thing. But we're not frogs. You know. We don't just. Uh, come into. Mud puddles. And hope that a woman. You know. Splashes in them. <laughs> well, I love. I love imagining if things were different. We're free. I find it entertaining. As, as a life form. Um. To me, I, I entertain all sorts of ideas like this, but I understand that it's almost, a, I don't know, taboo is the right word, but it's, um, it's, it's odd. And so when two people talk, or when a person talks, and, uh, knowing that other people are listening, there's sort of some things that kind of not expected to say, especially if, in my case, I'm talking to a, a wide audience, potential, um, all sorts of people. So you really got to feel things out, you know, no matter what area you're in. Now things are going to get loud, because I'm going to walk down the beach between Starlight and uh, Blair Street Park, which I'm going to be a few feet away from the waves. <clears throat> but I'll try to try to keep going. Uh, but I love entertaining these ideas. I find it I find it actually one of the most pleasant things about being alive and uh, 
having a brain, thinking, and all these see, these things. Is uh, you know, I was I was always really fascinated with life. I started out wanting to be a zoologist. I mean, I wanted to understand. I wanted to know. I wanted to work with. Um, as a child, it was mostly, uh, well, not mostly, but I don't want to make this seem too narrow, but I mean, I loved, I always think about it as a kid, I, I loved uh, albino Indian tigers. It was a, a big deal for me, white tigers, you know, oh, I got to be careful, there's logs, logs on the beach, you don't want to trip. I can't, it's hard for me to see them. I trip and drop the phone in the water. It's game over, man. Game over. Well, speaking of which, I just tripped on a sand dune. A clump of... What's this stuff called? Oh, there's a name for it. It's not... Sargosum. It's not that, but it's basically the same thing. It's algae. Benthic? Benthic algae? No, I am, uh, I'm mixing too many things up, but it has a name, the clumps on the beach of uh, basically plant life that live floating in the water. They have names. Oh, and that's another thing I'd love to talk about. Early life, talking about uh, this, this morning, SciShow put out a video talking about, uh, uh, well, they mentioned sort of briefly, very briefly, that uh, this species called, come on, Dickinsonia, Dickinsonia, as in uh, like Emily Dickinson, I think, or anybody Dickinson, uh, but anyway, Dickinsonia is the fossil, and it, it existed during the Edia Karen. Yeah, Karen. Uh, just prior to uh, the Cambrian. Now the uh, Edia Karen is a period. Is the Cambrian also a period? I think it is. Oh, nice! Ah, I just saw a fireball. A fireball in the sky. Where did it come from? Fireball. Um, tracing back, I don't know, I don't want to get too distracted, but that was, that was beautiful, and it was red, like, deep red, I think it's because of humidity, a lot of humidity in the air right now, but it, it burned for a long time, I don't see any trail though, because there's, there's still some clouds up there, but, uh, oh, that was beautiful, it, it came from the west, and it traveled towards the southeast. So west to southeast. And it was up in the sky. Up, if I'm facing directly south, it was about 45 degrees up in the sky. Um, with that information, I should be able to find out exactly which one it was. I can't recall uh, what meteor showers are going right now. But... It's uh, always nice to know that there are always meteor showers going year-round. Any meteor that you see is likely to be a member of a known meteor shower. And uh, if you do find one going in a direction away from a radiant uh, that is not known, let somebody know so that uh, you know we can we can start finding new ones. But right now there are. Dozens and dozens, uh, maybe a hundred or so known meteor showers. And each of those is just from uh, bits of debris out in space that we're passing through. Clouds of debris from uh, comets or anything else. But, uh, yeah, as we do more, as we learn more about that, 
we will be able to narrow down um, exactly where they come from or you know whether they all are uh, debris left over from comets or maybe some maybe some of it is debris left over from uh, impacts like uh, what's his name Thea Thea the moon before the moon when when it was just the earth here the body that crashed into the earth and early on I mean too many topics but I guess it's okay kind of all over the place it's, it's better to talk better to better to better to talk than not to talk this is it's better to talk than to think, and it's better to act than to talk. What could be above action? Getting other people to act, to spur action in others, to get enough life all working together. There you go. You got yourself a multicellular organism. Stromatolites. So I was talking about. Um, Dick and Sonia, and uh, SciShow, they mentioned uh, at one point, people thought that, you know, they, they weren't really sure what to classify it as. Is it an animal? Is it a plant? Or is it a fungus? <coughs> I didn't know that funguses, or fungi, fungi, could uh, exist underwater. But maybe, maybe they did. I, uh, you know, I wouldn't say that there was anything, any reason they couldn't. Like a, a sponge is a lot like a fungus. I don't even know for sure what a sponge is classified as. I think it's an animal. Uh, as far as the uh, see, kingdom, order, family, genus, species. No, that's kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. So, uh, let's see. As far as the kingdom goes, uh, I think right now there are seven kingdoms. And, uh, you know, you're... I, I would say there are at least seven kingdoms. And there will probably be more... You know, I know there's an argument to be made that we focus too much on, um, ooh, that's interesting. Um, the waves are coming in, into the sewer. Gosh, that's, that's awesome. I love whoever built this, you know, not a plumber, but the people that make rain sewers that connect to large bodies of water. It's interesting. May have some some uh, downsides like all of our I think probably the biggest problem is all of the stuff that comes out of exhaust. A lot of the heavy metals and things like that. Platinum. We're introducing so much to the water. But we'll, we'll figure things out. You know, we're making mistakes, but we're learning from them, so it's good. As long as we're learning from them. So, speaking of learning from mistakes, I think some people classified uh, Dickinsonian as a type of fungus at one point, a type of plant at another. I am, I'm really interested in these types of species, and I would love to see more, more uh, videos, more talk, just more information. I said I was going to retrace the same path, so kind of on course. We're at 40 minutes now, in about three minutes I should be where I was. Started the video a little early, but I didn't stay out on the pier as long as I did before, so... I'm walking up Blair Street now. 
So, uh, yeah, Dickinsonia. We, we need to learn more about our origins. Oh, and here's another. This kind of plays into the whole, whole video for tonight about consciousness. I keep I keep hearing about C. elegans, this uh, organism, flatworm. It has uh, like 300 neurons. I I would hope it's give or take, but does it, does every one only have? And I think it's like 305, 304 neurons. Um, one of the simplest creatures. Uh, as far as uh, neurological activity, as far as brain activity goes. And, uh, you know, it's responsive. I wouldn't... I don't know, I, this is one thing I, I, I do really love about this. This, uh, the topic of consciousness. Um... What I was thinking when I was listening to Sam and uh, David talk about, or at least I think uh, David mentioned C. elegans. <coughs> if Sam didn't before him. Um, but that, uh, you know, how many neurons does it take to be conscious? And, uh, you know, how far down did we go? Now, is that consciousness, or is that, uh, obviously, it's not awareness, but reaction. Um, you know, if I, was, if I was writing this up right now, I'd, I'd get a lot more words and be a lot more specific, but this is what it is. And we are what we are. You know, a lot of my brain is now on the internet. Just the memory part. But, so, let's say C. elegans has 300 neurons. Now, are, are neurons, is there something special about neurons that gives rise to consciousness? And uh, what, I, what I mean by that is, Maybe, maybe we should be looking at them more. I know I'm not really saying anything that's new, but uh, I think some in in the way that they lay information are they the same? Do do they as neurons function the same way? that uh, neurons in a human being function? Are all neurons the same? I don't think so. But uh, I do think they have some similarities. Perhaps that's one of the things that we should be looking at. Um, I'm sure it's, it's not easy to dissect a neuron or to uh, break it down, but we have electron microscopes we can figure this stuff out. We can, you know, here's a tricky thing, like setting up sensors, not just for, say, electromagnetism, but to also for chemicals. Um, we want to know what kind of neurotransmitters uh, organisms are using at various levels, um, you know, as far as size goes, as far as the number of neurons involved. And uh, I'm willing to bet that people have already done this as well, so maybe I'm just really saying that to myself if I'm interested in learning more about this, maybe I should. But I don't really watch my own videos, so probably know what I'm doing this. But at least talking about it will help. Um, and I'll think about it again. Or something will trigger me to realize that it was at one point something that I wanted to look up. But, uh, yeah. 
I do really want to know. Um, what, what chemistry is going on? Um, now, I don't want to be too uh, exclusionary. You know, I don't want to exclude other organisms. But I do think that they're, they're animals. They have something unique. Um, that plants and fungi don't have. I think, you know, I think for all of us listening, this might be a bit of an understatement, but maybe for some of you, uh, it's a bit, you know, you find that you feel the need to defend plants and animals. And that's okay, too. I mean, I, I recognize that they are alive, that they play a vital role in this. So I do not, I don't want to leave them out. I'm sure that there are some types of cells you know, in fact, that was another idea uh, that I think I've mentioned a few times in the past. Um, but the, which I guess it could kind of be the, the origins of, the origins of neurons. But um, if you take a tree, 